Are you a situation avoider or a feeling expresser? Now, I know there's a lot of gray area in between, but I think in general, we fall between those two categories when we have an experience that doesn't sit well. Let's say you have a falling out with someone. Are you more likely to let that person know how you feel or are you more likely to walk away pushing that experience, maybe that person aside, finding a way to stuff those emotions and the situation deep inside you? Well, Daily Dosers, wherever you find yourself on that spectrum, I'm guessing you can think of a time where you had a relationship that needed some work. Maybe you can think of one this very minute. Some reassembly in that relationship, you might say. Because we know relationships, they don't happen overnight. They take time. They take experiences from both people in a relationship in order for it to be assembled in the first place. And when there's some kind of friction between those two people, uh, it's just like that old bookshelf that you've moved from room to room of your house. Sometimes the shelves get wobbly from being jostled too much. And if you want to use that bookshelf over the long haul, if you want to have that relationship over the long haul, re-assembly is required. And today I want to ask the question with you, if there is going to be some kind of reconciliation, who moves first? When I was in college, I sang in a college choir, and it was a pretty tight-knit group of people. We had practice every day, just like you would if you were a part of a sports team, and you spend lots of time together. And in our second year, there was a situation where one choir friend and I, we were teasing another friend who was also in our choir. Believe me, I wish I could say that something like teasing, that it ended after my middle school days, but we all know this, it doesn't. We teased her about a choice that she had made, about the way that she was acting around other friends, and we just wouldn't let it go. And this third girl, it turned out, obviously, was really hurt by our words. And I can be, I can actually remember being in my dorm room and getting a call from her on a Sunday afternoon. This is before text messaging existed. And she asked us to come over and talk with her. I was so nervous to walk over there knowing it was gonna be a hard conversation. And she didn't hold back. She was really upset. She cried and she told us how hurtful we had been with our words. And I remember, though I'm not proud, at first I felt like she wasn't fully justified in her response. We were just teasing. She should know that. She had told other people she was upset with that. And how would that reflect on me, I wondered. But let's be honest, I couldn't excuse my actions or pretend somehow that I hadn't said those things because I did. And I had obviously failed to think about how it made her feel or how it affected our relationship. And we remained acquaintances throughout college, but it definitely wasn't the same. And I'm the first to admit I had an ego, so I didn't lean into that relationship anymore to let her know I wanted to rebuild that relationship. I stuffed that situation down. I kind of pretended it didn't happen. And now, as I got older, now that I am older, I realize that I am definitely a situation stuffer more than I am an emotion expresser. I mean, that friend, she was brave to call us into her room and tell her that we had hurt her. She made the first move when she definitely didn't have to. If anyone should have done that, it was me. I knew I shouldn't have taken my teasing so far that it attacked her personality, her as a person. Well, in the book of Romans, in chapter 12, we hear these words that Paul writes, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Be devoted to one another, honoring one another above yourselves. Never be be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor seeking the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Paul is talking about relationships that we have with one another. And these words, they sound pretty bold, like we might be thinking to Paul, yeah, that sounds easy, but do you really know people, Paul? They're hard to deal with sometimes. But I think Paul did know, even as he wrote these letters to new believers all over the place, that humans are human and we're bound to hurt one another. We're bound to make mistakes where we say something where we do something that doesn't have our friend or our family member's best interests in mind. 
but he's persistent in reminding us that love and honor and, res- and hospitality with the people around us has to start somewhere. So what if, as Christ followers, we were bold and brave enough to make sure it started with us? What if I would have been brave like that friend to step back and realize that my words were hurtful? What if I had the courage to apologize and work to reassemble that relationship rather than think I could simply walk away and somehow feel like it wouldn't have ever happened? So today, I invite you to think about the relationships in your life that need some reassembly. Don't be ashamed of that. Remember, we're human. We have plenty of flaws and we make plenty of mistakes. But remember also, we have a God who refuses to walk away from us or from the situations we're facing, regardless of the messes we've made. A God who could have said, this humanity that I created, it's doomed, I'm done. A God who could have walked away, but who instead made the first move in reconciliation with us. When God sent Jesus as his son, God made the first move in our direction. So what if, in our relationships where we're struggling, what if we were the ones to move in the direction of someone else as well. Thanks so much for watching The Daily Dose. We would love for you to subscribe if you're watching on YouTube so you can catch more Daily Doses along the way. Have a great day.